Hi, it's Chris Rides here from Tyro Security. I'm excited to do our first video in partnership with the Diana Initiative. And the first video, um, entitled Where It All Went Wrong, is regarding the job description. So it's just a few tips on um, what we think you need to really be doing. So job description of, often comes up as a, an area where when we're looking and working with certain clients and we look at where parts of their process aren't really working um, and why they're not really receiving the number of candidates, uh, the quality of candidates. Uh, and also, you know, it's so important that they're, the more candidates they bring in, the more likely they'll have a uh, more of an ability to, to look and interview people um, that are coming in from various diverse backgrounds, people that and groups that are underrepresented in cybersecurity. So first things first, when we talk about job descriptions, I'm a believer that two job descriptions is a good way to go. So two job descriptions, a simple one uh, that just contains the essentials and, and the task, and then an expanded one that's a little bit more detailed, uh, it has more essentials and desirables, still has the tasks and also the tools. So talking a bit more detail, um, this is one of my sayings. When you're working out with your essentials, you don't want to be really adding a certification within that because certifications are a quick way to lose a pool of candidates that have a lot of great experience and may well be very good for your role. So what you should be really doing there is your essentials you want to really look at, when I pick up a resume and I look at a resume and I'm going through the things that I really must see, the things that before I even decide, you know, am I going to look through the whole of this resume it might even be, what are the core competencies that this person must have? That's what you should be looking for. Look, unless you're getting too many qualified candidates, which in our industry isn't really happening, you want to make this as broad as possible. Um, and so you want to keep your essentials to the absolute essentials. So again, good way to do it. Look at the resume. What's the first things you look for on that resume? Write them down. Write them down in the order that you look or notice them, right? And then sanity check that with yourself, whether that's a per personal preference or is that a really an essential need for the job? I always say try to keep these things to sort of five or less. Use very broad descriptions rather than specific skills. Just be aware what you're trying to do is in, with this job description, and, and if you are going to be doing some advertising and things like that, this is what you're probably going to use. You want this job description to attract as many people as possible. Right? It needs to bring in now the right type of people, certainly, which is why it's important that it's accurate, but you want to bring in as many people as possible so you've got options. Right? So be wary when you're looking at essentials, when you're, when you're doing this, I'd be very wary of putting tools, specific tools in this job spec, unless, when I say job spec, it's an, an, another word for job description, unless it's an absolute non-negotiable that somebody has that. If they can't do this job and they won't be successful in the short term without having that specific skill, then add it. However, if it's something somebody can learn and somebody, somebody can pick up very quickly, then you don't need to have that specific skill. You might have to have knowledge of tools that do certain things but not specifically maybe that tool so just think about that and then tasks are very simple you want to make sure that people understand what the tasks of the job are and that they're on the same page it's no good having a load of people replying to your job only to find that they don't want to do the actual what, what the actual job is so so just bear that in mind so um your second one is the expanded job description and when I look at this sort of stuff, I'm, I'm thinking here, you want to keep the essentials from your first one. So your simple job description should cover all of that, uh, should cover your short-term needs, because your medium and long-term, what you're hopefully able to do is work with that, that candidate and work with a successful candidate, build their knowledge up. You know, that's something that actually helps retain staff. If you're investing into them and, and the medium to long-term skills, they should be the investment it's the short-term ones that should be the, the essentials. Now, when we come down to desirables, these are your nice-to-haves. These are the skills and experience that would benefit your team, maybe in the medium to long-term, or they're the things that would benefit in the short-term, but aren't essential. Um, and like doing this, it's a great way to find out if your, your long-term goals meet the areas that that candidate's long-term goals are. Right? If you're looking to, for that to be a fit, 
Um, and then tasks, again, really easy. You take those tasks from your, your simple job spec, the, the, the job description, the first one that you're doing. And then last one, tools used. So I was wary about putting this. Um, this is more about information. I did put, I think, on the first slide that we talked about internal and external, and, the, and a simple job spec is a great one to use externally. The more complex and, and, and sort of more detailed job spec, that's the one that you probably want to use internally or once somebody's already in the process. You know, and, and the, t the reason why tools should go on this one, if you're going to do it, is um, because that gives you an idea of what, what specifically they've been using, what you're using, gives them an idea of your environment. The one thing you have to be very careful of is when you give lists of tools, people without, uh, without necessarily the technical knowledge, so it might be uh, recruiters, internal HR, um, they could use those tools just as keywords, and that's not going to be very useful if those tools aren't essential. So just be very, very careful about that. And I know this sounds really strange. I recommend lots of kissing through the hiring process. So um, when I talk about that, I'm talking about keeping it simple. Throughout all of this, every time when you look at your simple job spec, even when you look at your more, you know, more detailed job description, keep it simple. Now, they're my tips on job descriptions. These are my contact details. I'm, I'm on LinkedIn an awful lot. LinkedIn is the best way to get in contact with me. So if you've got any questions, uh, you want to talk to, to any of either me or any of my team um, to get some help, please do so. They're my details, contact details there. You'll find me there, Chris Rides on LinkedIn. Uh, our website is www.tyrosec.com. And my Twitter is at Chris Rides. I don't use it that often. So if you feel like you're not getting um, a quick response from that, you may be better connecting with me uh, either on LinkedIn or just giving us a call. So anyway, look, thank you very much for listening to this. This was video one, and I'm looking forward to getting on and, and doing video two. Thank you.